In this quickie, we're going to look at how to use RSS feeds to create an application. So I'm just going to start with a quick sample of an RSS feed that actually is a language RSS feed that brings in words in French and English. And I've built a little small application that you could drag around and you could highlight, find the word that's connected to thank you, that would be merci, au revoir, au revoir, goodbye. Hello, goodbye would be bonjour, so let's grab the bonjour, and non is no. So that was our little application. You could see I was really slow, so my score is zero, and I could play it again. But let's jump in and actually see how to start making that connection and connecting the pieces together to starting up an application like this. So to do that, I'm just going to close uh, my slow file and go to my browser for a minute and show you where I'm getting the RSS feed. So I've created a new account on Twitter called Word French, and Word French will, whenever I learn a few new words in French, I'll just upload it to Word French, or you could always, always call me out with a word and I will add it in if it be more than happy to learn words in French. Um, so th this is the Twitter account, and if you'll notice. On the bottom right side, you'll see the RSS feed for Words French Tweets, and if you click on it, you'll see actually the link, which it's the HTTPS, Twitter, and so on, but you could get rid of the word feed, and you could get rid of HTTPS because we don't need it to be secured, and we could just grab that URL and take it directly into our Flash. So if we go back into our Flash file, you're, we're going to see that... Um, I'm just going to swap to my regular main... And we'll see that all we have here at this point in time is just the link to that RSS feed and an empty new blank application. So the first thing that we'd want to do is actually load that RSS feed. And because I'm working with CS5, it's going to automatically import the packages for me that I am going to be using. So let's start. First of all, I want to create a new URL loader, which will be of a type URL loader. And notice how the import automatically imports, so we don't need to worry about that. And we want to create a new URL loader and a new URL request. And send to the URL request our RSS feed. Now that we have our new URL loader, we want to make sure that we are listening to our URL loader for when it completes the load, which for that we will use the event.complete. Oh, up all uppercase right on RSS load well let's just keep with the terminology there so we'll just call it on RSS complete and let's create our little function notice how I didn't import yet my event because I'm working with CS5 and I know that in a moment when I continue typing I will see when I load in my event, it will automatically add in the event. So I did not need to import anything. So let's see what happened so far. So if I just, first of all, before we well, before we even do anything, the first thing that we always want to do is we want to get rid of the event that we just listened to. But unfortunately, we didn't really, we didn't really set a variable, a global variable, because we knew we were only going to use this once. And to get rid of this event, I could just call directly the target and then remove event listener. I don't need to save that variable. I could just directly approach it um, through the event because the event dispatcher sends me the target. And then I could just send the same parameters that I've set to my add event listener here and done. We've just removed our event, making sure that we don't have a memory leak. And now if we go to our target again and check our data, and just run our app one more time, we're going to see that we're already getting in our RSS feed. Now the next item that we want to do is we want to break this RSS feed down and kind of see what we actually want out of it. So if I'll just copy this out and I'll just throw it into a new file. I'm just going to create a new class, just random name, just delete all that and just paste it in there so we could look at the RSS feed itself. So we'll see first we have our channel information that has our title, our links, and so on. And then we have items. Item, 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 and so on. So basically we know if we're going to use our E4X, 
we could do now? Let's see. First of all, so first, before we do anything, we want to create a new XML file, right? Private var XML, which is a type of XML. And we want to set the value inside of our XML to be an XML with the data value that we've just traced out. So now we know we have an XML, and now we could start interacting with it. So first of all, we know we want to go into our channel, and we could see that up there. So channel, and we want to go, right now we don't care about all this, we want to go into our item. And if we check this out, we're going to see, first of all, we're going to get an XML list, and it's going to give us all the different items in our application. I know it's a list because we could even, if we wanted to, just check our length. And we'll see that we have five items so far in our channel. So we got down to our item. And we want to store that so we could loop through that element. So I'm just going to create an XML list. And I'm just going to set the value that we had in our trace. And the next step that we want to do is actually loop through that XML list and approach the data directly. Now, if we look at the feed, we're going to see that in the feed itself, we'll see that all the words, I've created a rule, a strict rule, that every time that there's a French word, after that, this combination of letters would happen, and then the translation into English. So now, because I know that, we could use that for our advantage. So let's see, first of all, let's first get our words. So if I check, if I'll just create a new for each. And let's see what would we put inside of our trace now. So now we want to approach our item directly, right? And let's look at our item. Our item packet has a title, and that's where we want to go into. So let's type there dot title. Ooh, a little error here. Oh, we have a little bit too many or not enough. Let's see. First of all, and we see that we're missing one. So let's close that bracket. And here we go. So we have all of our words so far. And now we have a little problem. We, we want to get rid of this intro piece. And we want to get rid of this element. We want to break this down into two separate elements. So to do that, we have a few options. One, we could grab our word French from our channel itself, because in the channel, we'll see that in the title channel, we have our name right here. Like that, making sure that if we change a channel, we change a language, we won't have to change anything but that URL. So let's do that. First, let's grab, let's create a new variable here. And we'll call it um, username, which is a string. And we're going to get the username from our xml.channel dot title, right? We're in our channel dot title. And then we want to get rid of all of that. So I'm just going to copy that. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to split that string that is going to return. And then I'm going to join that string, basically creating just that username. 